In a women's college basketball season that was hyped up from the start, four teams are left to battle it out in the 2024 National Championship in Cleveland, Ohio. In the first semifinal matchup, number one seed South Carolina will look to continue its winning streak and remain undefeated with taking on number three seed NC State. The second game on Friday night will be the number one Iowa facing off against the number three seed UConn. This matchup is something that we've been waiting for for years, and many will call this the Caitlin versus Page battle. So far, the level of talent and thrilling moments have not disappointed, and these games on Friday night should be no different. Let's break down each of the 2024 Final Four teams and their chances to take home the national title. At number four, we have the NC State Wolfpack. The Wolfpack are perhaps a team that not many people had in their bracket making it to the Final Four, but this squad has proved that they shouldn't be doubted. After defeating number two seed Stanford in the Sweet 16, NC State then went on to go beat the number one seed Texas in the Elite Eight to advance to the semifinals. The Wolfpack have had an impressive tournament thanks to the amazing play of guards James and Rivers. This backcourt duo looks dangerous and at times unstoppable if they could keep up the hot shooter. James has scored 19 or more in every NCAA tournament game so far and went 7 for 9 from the three point line in the game versus Texas. The Wolfpack get help on the boards and in the paint scoring from grad transfer River Baldwin, who will face a tough test against South. South Carolina's Camilla Cardoso. NC State enters Friday's game with a 31-6 record and finished second in the ACC standings behind Virginia Tech, despite being picked to finish eighth in the conference in the preseason. We had a little stretch. February, we lost a couple road games and I think everybody thought we were going to fall apart head coach Wes Moore said after their win over Texas. And these players just kept working, stuck together, I mean, they're such, the chemistry is so good they really you know pull for each other friday's game also marks nc state's first final four appearance since 1988 if the wolfpack were on the other side of the bracket maybe we could make a case of them making the national championship game but getting through south carolina first is a tough task coming up third on the list is the yukon huskies when yukon started its season many questioned if this team was equipped to make a big run in the postseason the huskies fell to four and three in the first week of december falling to number 17th in the ap top 25 the lowest ranking for the program in 30 years. The injury bug also plagued UConn this season, forcing them to play with just eight players throughout the entire NCAA tournament. But one thing UConn does have going for them is the resurgence of redshirt junior Paige Beckers, who missed all last season due to an ACL injury and has reminded fans why our coach Gino reversed her as the best player in the country. Beckers' performance to get her team to the Final Four was stellar, posting 28 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists versus USC. Another weapon on this UConn team is the senior forward Alaya Edwards, who announced she plans to enter the WNBA draft at the end of the season, and she's expected to be a first-round pick. Edwards is athletic, a versatile presence in the paint for the Huskies, and leads the team in rebounds. The Huskies will be looking for their first national championship since 2016, but will need to get past Clark and her squad first. UConn did a decent job making things more difficult for freshman superstar Juju Watkins, and it'll be exciting to see the strategy and defensive scheme they bring up in the semifinal match. At second on the list, it hurts me to say, but we got Iowa with superstar Caitlin Clark. With Clark leading their team all season, the Hawkeyes showed up to put the ultimate team effort against LSU in the Elite Eight, defeating the Tigers 94 to 87. Clark is a constant threat on the court for any opponent, but the key to Iowa securing the national title will be her supporting cast, bringing her the fire as well. The Hawkeyes will look to Gabby Marshall for a strong defensive effort, and don't be surprised if you see her falling around Beckers the entire game. On Tuesday, head coach Lizzie Blutter spoke highly of the fifth-year player, saying Gabby. Marshall Marshall, first of all, is our player that we put on to guard the best player on the other team. She does this every single game. Last night, she played 40 minutes for us. She's a trooper. She'll go do whatever we ask her to do. She remembers her scout, her personnel, and gets the job done that way. Sophomore Hannah Stokey will have to show up to play against UConn's Edwards. She along with their fellow teammates Addison O'Grady were able to control an injured Angel Reese. They will have to bring a similar level of performance on Friday night. Guard Kate Martin will be relied on for the scoring assistance in order for the Hawkeyes to really compete, especially with all eyes on Clark. Clark is leaving the college basketball world to enter the WNBA draft and has left an impact on the game while etching her name in the record book. We know the competitor she is and the intensity she brings to the court. She wants to win more than anything, which gives Caitlin Clark a chance at completing her college career on a high note. Coming up number one on the list, it wasn't a surprise, South Carolina. It's not hard to call South Carolina the favorite at this point with an unblemished 36-0 record, and they undoubtedly have the best roster in the whole NCAA. The Gamecocks have a lot of weapons on their team and always show up ready to play solid defense. Their Sweet 16 and Elite 8 round games proved to be a test for them, but South Carolina still managed to pull off the wins. In the Sweet 16 versus Indiana, South Carolina had a 21 point lead with 6 minutes left in the third quarter, and then they let the Hoosers inch back into the game with a 2 point margin in the final minute. Head coach Don Staley told reporters after the game, I've only learned what I've already known and that's the, I've got a resilient basketball team that don't like losing. They are able to make plays on both sides of the basketball through great play, through shoddy play, through having a lead, 
having a bit lead and then getting it down to have a one possession game. It was so impressive that they were able to play their way out of it. This South Carolina squad is anchored by the senior 6'7 center Cardoso who leads the team in points and rebounds per game. However, teams can't forget about the talented and quick guard South Carolina has in Raven Johnson, Bree Hall, and Papoa. Johnson, who some may remember from the viral clip of Kaylin Clark waving her off in last year's semifinals, hit a much needed three-pointer against Indiana to help secure the win. The now sophomore has talked about having more confidence this time around and has the shooting capability to be a game changer. Some may wonder if the Gamecocks are battle-tested enough after Indiana's comeback against them but they have held their own against other ranked SEC teams coming out on top and winning the ACC tournament title. The way their season has gone, it almost seems like it's their tournament to lose.